Hi, I'm Emily Jiang. I work for IBM as an OSGI developer. I'm also an Apache Ares committer. In this short video, I will discuss the OSGI best practices. As an OSGI application developer or architect, how can you make your system easier to maintain or extend? In another word, how can you make your system to be a modular system? This talk is to help you achieve your design goal. When you design your OSGI applications, you need to follow the following best practices. Best practice one, use the import package, not require bundle. As you know, bundle manifest can declare its dependencies. There are two ways to declare the bundle dependencies. You can do it through require bundle or import package. The use or require bundle is discouraged because it makes your bundles tightly coupled. All the packages exported by the require bundle are not available to the client bundle. And as the client bundle is developed over time, it may start to depend on these other packages. The bundle providing the package can no longer be replaced by a different one with a different symbolic name without making changes to the client bundle. Using import package enables the OSGI framework to wire to any bundles exporting the specified package. It enables loose coupling between bundles. Only import the package you need. Besides, the version management between the import package and require bundle are different. Require bundle use the bundle version management. Import package use the package version management, which is the client bundle most interested in. Best practice two: avoid split packages. A split package occurs when a package is exported by two bundles at the same version and the set of classes provided by each bundle differs. Classes may be duplicated or more typically, part of the package is in one bundle and the remainder of the package is in another. A split packages leads to the use of required bundle. Here is an example. The bundle C has to use require bundle to ensure that it has classes from both parts of the API bundles. If it use import package, the OSGF framework will only wire the bundle C to one of the API bundles. The solution to split the package is to put the same package in one bundle. If you have a package that makes sense to split between bundles, then you do not have a high cohesion between those two parts, and you should use two different packages. Best practice three, version bundles and packages. In OSGI, packages and bundles can be versioned. If no version is specified, it defaults to zero. This will not be able to utilize the OSGI feature of permitting multiple versions of the bundles to be deployed in the framework. Packages and bundles should be semantically versioned, so clients can protect themselves against API changes that might break them. What is semantic versioning? It uses a major dot minor dot macro dot qualifier numbering scheme. A change in the major means binary incompatible change, such as deletion of an API or a method. A change in the minor version indicates that API has been enhanced, but the existing client do not need to be recompiled. An example of this kind of change is the addition of an interface or adding a method. A change to the macro version indicates a change has been made that doesn't change the API. An example of this is a bug fixing. Let's look at a few examples. 
In this example, Figure 3 shows two providers of an API bundle where the API is the same version. In OSGI, these two providers are considered the equivalent. Both the client A and the implementation A can use either of the API bundle. Figure 4 shows API bundle B has a minor version change. Client A can still use the API A or API B. An implementation A will no longer be able to use API B because the version range specifies from 1.0 up to 1.1 .1, but not include 1.1. .1. Implementation B can only use API B because it specifies the version range from 1.1 .1 or above up to 1.2 but not include 1.2. And the client B can only use API B. In this final example, as we can see, API B has a major version change. Client A no longer uses API B because its version range is from 1.0 to 2.0, but not include 2.0. And client B can only use API B. As we can see from these three examples, a change in the major version or minor version affects the implementation and client bundle differently. This is the end of the part one of the OSGI best practices. Please watch this channel for further parts of the OSGI best practices.